All right, good day and welcome back to Everything Mathematics. And today we're just following up on what we started yesterday. And today we're going to be doing a little proof. But before we get into the proof, I just want to do a little explanation on what this whole identity thing is about. You see, oftentimes we isolate identity and we put out identity matrix as something that is high tech and complicated. But prior to this, when we look at the certain laws of numbers, commutative, distributive, and all other laws that exist, you know, one of the things that we looked in a number is the law of identity. And a number's identity is oftentimes determined by the operation that the number undergoes. For example, and let me just generalize here first. The identity of a number is that number in which when whatever operation you operate with a given number, you get back the same number. In other words, nothing is changed. So let's look at addition quickly. If we go to look at addition, let's look at the number eight. There is a number in which we could add eight with and get back eight. That number is known as the identity of that operation. Whenever it comes to addition, the identity is always zero. Because any number you add to zero, it does not affect the number. You get back eight. And that is true also when you're subtracting. So if you subtract zero from eight, guess what? You will get back eight. Even if the number is negative, it does not matter. Negative seven plus zero, guess what? You still get negative seven. And if you have negative five minus zero, guess what? You will still get negative five. Therefore, under addition and subtraction, we say that the identity of that operation is zero. Because whenever you operate zero by any number, whether you're adding or subtracting that operation, you will get back the same number. Guess what? When it comes to multiplication, the I the identity is another number. And again, I'll stick to my eight. If we multiply eight by zero, we will not get back eight. We will get zero. Because as we know, anything times zero is zero. However, if we multiply by one, we get back eight. And that's what the identity of multiplication is. Whenever we multiply anything by one, we get back the number. So the identity of multiplication is one. And likewise for division, because anything we divide by one, we get back the same thing. Eight divided by one is eight. Eight times one is eight. Seven times one is seven. Any, uh, negative five times one is negative five. So that's under multiplication. Understanding that concept will help us hopefully to appreciate a little more the matrix and the identity matrix. When it comes to the matrix now, here what happens. The other is a bit reversed. So for example, in yesterday's video, I wrapped up that if you have matrix L and you go to multiply that by matrix L inverse, the inverse of L, you will end up with I. And this, uh, it kind of plays a little with what we already just examined there. But what you need to understand here now is that Whenever you have a matrix and you multiply it by the inverse of that matrix, you will end up with the identity matrix. And remember, the identity matrix is that matrix in which whatever you multiply it with, you will end up getting the same thing. And that is a concept you need to understand, especially when we move on to our topic, which is coming very soon, solving simultaneous equations. Getting that will save you a lot of calculation trouble and it's just a fact that you could just accept. The inverse is another way in which we could look at maybe, not thoroughly, but maybe it's another way in which we could consider getting the reverse of the identity in essence. But I would not play too much with that term. For now, at least I need you to understand that the identity matrix is basically just that. Anything what you multiply with the identity matrix, you get back the same thing. And just to recap, the identity matrix is one, zero, zero, one. This is the identity matrix. So anything you multiply by this, this matrix here, you will get back the original matrix. What I want us to prove today, and today we're just doing a little proof. This is already a fact, but I just want to show us how we get it. 
And we're going to do two simple examples. I will not give you any to do, but of course, if you want, you could. But this year, what we're doing today, this year is basically what we're trying to confirm. We're not searching to see if it's so. We're not verifying it. No, we, we are simply confirming. And this is already a proven fact. Any matrix multiplied by that same matrix inverse will always produce the identity. So let us see how that works. Let's just do two simple matrices here. So here I have matrix T. For one of them, I worked it beforehand just to confirm that this works. The, the other one, I will just make up a generic one and let us see if this works out to be so. The only worry I think we should have, of course, and I'll try not to let that happen, is if we end up with a singular matrix, as I was explaining two days ago. If we have a singular matrix, meaning that the determinant is zero, then likewise, we cannot have the adjoint, we cannot have the inverse, and many other implications that goes on the line with that. So let's say we have matrix T, and matrix T is equal to one, two, one, four. And as I said, I did this one beforehand, so I know this one will be true. I know this one will prove to be so. But for the other one, I do not know, at least not yet. Um, but I will just do what we're supposed to do, right? So here we have this. And first of all, so this is matrix T. So we could see this as L. A matter of fact, let me name it L. Let me name it L so that we could follow up. So we could hopefully see the relationship easier. So we have matrix L already. Now we need to find L inverse. And when we find L inverse, we're going to multiply it by L and see if we get the identity. Good. So let's just go through the steps. So first thing first I need here is the determinant and I need the adjoint. So let's get the adjoint first. Since it's just a matter of shifting. Adjoint of L is equal to, remember you change the leading diagonal. So where is the one? You put the four. Where is the four? You put the one. And the minor diagonal, you change sign. So here we have minus two instead of two. And here we have minus one instead of just one. That's our adjoint. Then let's look at the determinant of L. Determinant of L is the leading diagonal minus the product of the leading minus the product of the minor. So that will be four times one, and you subtract that from two times one. And once that's the case, you have four minus two. So here we will have a determinant of two, right? That's as simple as that goes. And now we will want to write the inverse. So we have everything we need for the inverse. So L inverse in this case would be one over the determinant. Remember, we did this yesterday. And we multiply that by the inverse, sorry, by the adjoint, which we found over here already. So that will be 4 minus 2 minus 1, 1. And that's that. Um, from here now, because we want to prove that when we multiply this by the original matrix to get the identity, then we have no choice. Here we have to multiply the scalar by each element of the matrix. So therefore we have L to the negative a half is equal to, and here what I'm doing, a half times four, a half times negative two, a half times one, a half times negative one. That's what I'm going to do, right? So the half is treated like a scalar. So a half times four, that would, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh yeah, equal, yes, I'm making it one. So a half times four, that would be two. You could work it out if you don't believe that. Um, then you have negative a half. Then you have a half times negative two is actually negative one. You could see that as half of negative two. And yeah, the same thing for four. Half of four is two. Half of two is one, but it's negative, so it's negative. And half of one is a half. So that's, that's another way you could, look at, you could look at it here. I didn't even think about it that way. Right, so now we have L inverse and we have L. Let me just go back on top to take down L. So this is matrix L here, one, one, two, four. Let me take note of that, mental picture. So L is equal to one, one, two, four. Good, that's matrix L. Let me just confirm again. Yes, one, one, two, four. And right here, look at it right here, we have L inverse. So in other words, now we want to prove that L multiplied by L inverse will give us the identity. Good. And remember, we established the identity matrix is 1, 0, 0, 1. So you see, at first, it don't look like that. But when we work it out, it'll be marvel. 
And a matter of fact, I'm telling you now, don't be afraid to work with fractions. I know fractions tend to trap a lot of people sometimes. So here, here what we want to prove. We want to prove that one, one, two, four, multiplied by two, zero, one, negative a half, and a half is actually equal to one, zero, zero, one. That's what we want to prove. That is what this is saying here. L multiplied by L inverse is equal to I. Matrix L multiplied by the inverse of the same matrix is equal to the identity. This is what we know supposed to be. In fact, at higher level maths, I'm telling you, this is just a concept that we have to accept because it's proven. That doesn't mean you cannot make a mistake along the way. But that simple fact sometimes helps us to solve some another part of further problems in another problem. If you understand what I mean, I know it's some high tech, but yeah. But at the CSEC level, you really need to make sure you could prove it and you really need to make sure that you know that fact because it comes to play when you're solving simultaneous equations using matrices. Good? So for now, let's do that. So remember, when we multiply matrices, remember we do row by column, row by column, and then we just do the next row. This is a two by two matrix, so the result will also be a two by two matrix. I will draw my big box here because I know that I have some long operations to do. So first I have one times two. I'll just write it out, I'll spell it out. One times two plus one times negative one. That's this row by this column. Now I'm doing the same thing now, this row by the next column. And that would give me one times negative a half plus one times a half, plus one times a half. Good, that's this row now by this column. Now I'm going second row, first column. So quickly, well, I guess my spacing was too big, but it doesn't matter. Two, yeah, it kind of matters because I want us to be able to see as much as possible. So let me make it a little smaller. Make it a little smaller so when I slide on, we could still see the top. Right, so here we have now, Two times two, two times two, plus four times negative one. Good. And then we have two times negative a half, row by column, plus four times a half. And that's the arithmetic. Now it's just to solve. So solving here, should I solve it right here? Okay, let me solve it right here. So two times two, two times one, that is two, plus one times one, that is negative one. So two minus one, that will give us one. So, so far so good. We're supposed to get a one in that top column. Let's do below here now. Two times two, that is four, plus four times minus one is actually minus four. Well, look at that. Zero, check. We're supposed to get zero in that corner here. We know we're supposed to get a one here with no ally. We know we're supposed to get a zero here and we're supposed to get a one here. Let us see if we actually get it though. One multiplied by negative a half is negative a half. Plus one multiplied by a half is actually a half. Negative a half plus a half, oh la la, guess what? That is zero. And then you have, two times negative a half, that is actually negative one. Yes, remember two times negative a half. But if you can see it like that, see it like negative two over two, and negative two over two is negative one. Plus, here we have four times a half. Four times a half is two, or four divided by two is two. And minus two plus two is actually one. Man, man, you gotta love that proof. So indeed, when we multiply L by L inverse, we did get one, zero, zero, one. Lovely, gotta love maths for that. Good. So yeah, that's basically the rundown of it. And as I said, this is just, this already is a proven fact. So this is not something we prove in math. Well, let me not say it's not proven in math. I guess sometimes you do, you are asked to prove just to make sure that you work it out. Um, what you could say with this, however, let me say you try to multiply a matrix by its inverse and you're not getting the identity, that simply means, or that could just be a confirmation that 
something went wrong somewhere along the line, right? That's, that's what you could settle for. And here now I have another matrix, I name it X. And as I said, I just made this one up. I did not prove it. I made it up. So we have two, two, four, one. Good. And let's just apply the same concept and see if this also, well, again, as I said, it will be, but it is kind of cool to know if you just make up any random matrix, it could work. And maybe you could do this at home too. Just make up a random matrix and see if it will actually work. And if it doesn't work, then maybe there are one of two implications. Is either perhaps that matrix is not a singular, or well, not singular. It could be singular, meaning that the, the dominant is equal to zero, or it could just be that it's not a function. Because one of the things you need to know that a function, for something to have an inverse, then that means it has to be a function. And by function, we mean it's one-to-one. -one. If that does not happen, then of course, all these things could hinder the inverse of a matrix. But I would think those are more complex um, terminologies or rather more complex conclusion to me. At this level, CSEC, I don't think you will end up with those scenarios. Well, I hope not. So then here we're trying to prove again, or just trying to show that X multiplied by X inverse will give us back the identity matrix, right? And as I said, this is a generic matrix I just made up, right? So let's find the determinant in this one first. So the determinant here would be the leading diagonal, the product of the leading diagonal minus the product of the minor diagonal. So that's eight times four, four two times four. I'm uh, thinking faster again than I'm calculating. So here we have two times one, that's two minus two times four is eight, which I saw even before I wrote it up. And two minus eight is minus six, yes? And the adjoint is just a matter of observation and switching around a few things. Adjoint of X, that would be equal to switch positions of the leading, switch signs of the minor. That's that. And that will leave us with x inverse of 1 over 6 or negative 6 or negative 1, 6 multiplied by 1, negative 2, negative 4, and 2. And again, because I want to prove this, I will multiply out my scalar. This 1, 6, negative 1, 6 becomes like a scalar. So that leaves us with negative one six, then we have, ooh, let's see. Okay, this will be positive now. I will break down after. So we have four six, just for we to see at least. Then we have two six, just making sure I don't get my signs wrong. I'm actually doing live, I'm doing this live as we're working. As I said, I didn't try this one before. So this is two six, hold on, something must be wrong, right? So this one's supposed to be negative because I'm not multiplying by negative. This negative and this negative will cancel off. So yes, this would be positive, but this negative and this positive too will make it negative. Good. Right two. And right away, I could see that two is um, a factor for some of these fractions. So let's break it down. So it's always easier to work with smaller numbers. We're not changing the value of the fraction. We're just changing what, what it looks. We're just lowering the fraction. We're getting an equivalent fraction too. So the one six is as low as it could go. This, we could, the four six could break down with two and give us two thirds. And the two six could give us one third. And the two six here again is one third, but negative. Oh my God, is this even work? <laughs> right, and then we have matrix X and we're multiplying that by the inverse of X to make sure that we get um, the identity matrix, right? Let me just go back and talk to see what was matrix X. So matrix X is two, two, four, one. Okay. So matrix X is two, two, four, one. And the inverse of that is minus one, six, um, minus a third, uh, two thirds, and minus one third. This we know supposed to give us the identity matrix, right? So let's do some maths. So here we have two times negative um, one six. So two times negative one six. Oh, by the way, at this level, you have to be masters of multiplying matrices too. Eh? 
And four times negative four. Otherwise, this process here could be very confusing and tedious too. Four times negative a third. If you don't know what the resultant metrics would be and where the results when you multiply rows by column will end up, yeah, that, that's a different problem altogether. But don't make this the problem here. If you don't already know how to multiply matrices, then focus on that. And I had a video, I released a video on that last week, Thursday, I believe. You can simply go back and you just multiply two by two matrices. It's just that. That was the focus of it. So you can do that if that is a problem. Don't blame it on the inverse. Right. So then we have, so we did the row by the first column, and now we're doing the first row by the second column. So that would be two, oh, sorry, that would be two times two thirds plus four times negative one third. So that's it for the top, the two top elements. Then we're going for the bottom element. So now we're doing this row here by this column here. So that would be two times negative one six plus one times negative a third. Good. And then here now, last one, two times two thirds plus one times negative a third. That's it. And let's see if this will end up giving us our identity. So solving on top here now, two times a one six, that will give me negative two six. And then I'm multiplying that, that is plus, um, we have four times um, this here, four times one third will give us negative, negative four third. Uh, let's see. Yes, negative four thirds. Let me just make sure this is right. So two times negative one over six is two over six, and we're subtracting that because this is negative four thirds. Yeah, that good day. We solve there just now. So here we have two times that. We have four thirds. I could see this here for sure. Plus, no, uh, 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 that would be minus again, minus four thirds. Ah, well, this one is zero already. I could see this, four thirds. That one they have to solve just now. So yes, here we have four thirds minus four thirds. So we could see already that we have a zero in the top corner here. Let's see below here. Here we have again, four thirds minus, hmm, minus one third. Okay, good. I can see this one already too, right? Four thirds minus one third, the denominators remain the same. So this will leave us with three, and four minus one is three. So guess what? That is one. Yes, this is one. And that's what we want there, one. So this is good. I have an issue here, but hold on. Let me check that just now. Let me check that just now. Something must, it must work. Because so far we have two correct points. Two times six, we have negative two six, right? Negative two six. And over here now, we will end up with a negative one third. Negative one third. Yes, yes, yes. Or oh, no, no, no. Yes, negative one third. Right, -o. so let's see what's happening here now. So when we do this here now, we will end up with negative. Oh, okay, okay, good. I could see this. Negative two six is the same thing as negative one over three when divided by two. And if this is the case, we will end up with. A negative times a negative and a negative, so that will be minus two minus two, minus one minus one. That's two. Nah, that's still adding up. Still ain't adding up. So something wrong here. And let me see up here too. If I hold on, let me just make sure here. Two times two is two over six. One times six is one over three. Yes. If I divide it by two, I'll end up with um. 1 over 3. Minus 1, minus 1, that's minus 2 over 3. That's not 0. That is not 0. That is not 0. Even if I go to multiply this other side over here, that is 6. And then over here, we have uh, what I had before, 1. So here would be 2. Yep, even if I do it like that, nope, 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 nope. So something n right there. And I think that's the same thing that's happening up here, unfortunately. 
here we have four thirds. Um, even if I go to, oh yeah, something could work okay. But here I could have one over, no, still not working. One over three, it's still not working. This will end up being minus five over three. Ah, uh, well, I guess you have to wrap up this one here. So as I said, this is a makeup value. I guess you have to be very careful with the values that you just plug it in. But the first one, as I said, I worked it out beforehand, so I saw that it worked. This one, as I said, I just plug in two, four random values in this matrix here. I just make up four random values here and see if it would end. And I wanted us to see live, of course, if it could end up with a matrix, the identity, and no. And this could only mean probably one of two things, as I said. This is definitely not a singular matrix. If it was, then we would not have gotten a determinant. If it's a singular matrix, then the determinant will be zero. And that's not the case here. So the, other, the only other possibility in this case is that this matrix, the element of this matrix make up what we consider to be a non-function. It will be a relation. A non-function simply means that it's not one-to-one. -one. And if it's not one-to-one, -one, oftentimes it will be, let me just say it's not impossible for you to get um, the inverse. But as we know when dealing with function, for an inverse to exist, it must be a function. And that function must be one-to-one. -one. It must be onto. And if the function is not onto, then the inverse does not exist. Or in order, and again, you might see, we may not be able to see the relationship here, but that's just what it is, and that's honestly a fact. So at the end of the day, if you don't have a one-to-one -one function, you cannot have an inverse of that function. And perhaps this is what these random numbers I came up with here simply share. But I think it was a nice experiment. So we're going to wrap it up there for today. And as always, again, be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video if you enjoyed. And see you until the next one tomorrow, God willing, where we will be looking at um, using matrices with algebra. So until then, you take care.